you now, Winthrop. You have the surveys, the maps, and my letters of instruction. I'll start negotiating at once. Cable me as soon as you arrive in London. I shall follow your instructions to the letter, Sir Henry. The money shall be transferred to your account here at the Merchant's Bank. I'll see the attorney, Rontel. I think I'll use his services. Very good. Cheerio. I know the syndicate back home will be mighty proud of what you've done. Thanks, Winthrop, and a very pleasant journey to you. Cheerio. I presume you are Mr. Rontel. Why, yes, but I, uh, I don't believe I've had the pleasure of making your acquaintance. I... Oh, I'm, I'm delighted to meet you, Sir Sheffield. Won't you sit down? Why, yes, I thank you. You've been in this country a long time, haven't you, Mr. Rontel? Yes, quite some time. I enjoy the confidence of and take care of most of the legal matters for the ranchers in this vicinity. That, Mr. Rontel, is exactly what brings me here. You've been very highly recommended to me. Thank you. I'll endeavor to live up to my recommendations. Uh, just what is your uh, trouble or difficulty? Oh, no trouble at all. Quite to the contrary. My associates in the British Continental are definitely prepared to make a very large investment here. It would seem that you are the legal link to our chain. I am at your service. We have guarded our findings very carefully. Of course, our clients must be protected at all costs. Naturally. I believe you comprehend, Mr. Rontel. Thoroughly. You may proceed in all confidence. Splendid, my dear fellow, splendid. Let me see. Ah, here. Now then, this is the district in which we are definitely interested. Now, my survey shows that along here and down to this point... peaceful community, but that's all changed. Something has got to be done. Well, that's all very well for you to say, Hayden, but how can you fight something you can't see? You're right about that. We can't go on living in fear and terror. Our neighbor, Jim Bell, shot down without a chance to defend himself. But we haven't been able to find one clue pertaining to the guilty party. Well, if this thing continues, I'm for selling out and pulling stakes. It's mighty queer we can't get to the bottom of this. What's the sheriff doing? Yes, yes what, is what is the, the sheriff doing? Whoa. Come, come now, gentlemen. You're being very unfair in your criticism of the sheriff, especially since he isn't here to defend himself. I'm positive that he can be depended upon to not only enforce the law, but to bring the culprits to justice. I'm itching to see the man that done this a hanging to the end of a rope. Uh, set him up, Bill. Okay. Come on, boys. What? Make your point. Right. 
and old meal in the spring, a song of his lonely western land. Carefree and happy, this cowboy of the west, heading for the home range, raising the best. There's victory on his smiling face, he knows that he won't fail. When riding his old pony down the lonely trail, even shadows falling with the Music makes you kind of homesick, don't it? Yeah. I wish I was home with Miguel. What home and what gal? None of your business. That reminds me. Are we in the business of raising and selling beef for money or excitement? Ah, wherever there's money, there's excitement. Say, where are we drifting to? Over to the Pecos Valley? Mm, that's all right. I've got a gal over there. So maybe you'll get a home, too. Yeah, so you can move in. Sheffield, you're making it necessary for me to visit you quite often. Now, we can avoid all this if you'll do just as I say. Are you ready to sign this? I won't do it. Are you going to force me to make you sign? Looks like we've got about five miles to go. When we hit the lower country, we'll try to make a deal. What do you think? What's the use of me thinking? It's what I thought. Something is wrong. Hate should have passed through here long ago. Well, what do we do? The boss is ordered us to get him. Looks like Carl knows something. Just caught sight of Hayden, taking the old road. like trouble. I wonder who's right and who's wrong.
I'm lending the old man a hand. that gun and reach. I said reach. Do you want to talk? Do you want to keep the information for where you're going? Uh, it's kind of hard to talk when you ain't got nothing to talk about. But you seem to find words mighty easy. Somebody's going to get hurt and I'm looking at who I mean. Where's your partner? Right here, gentlemen. make another move. I don't aim to hurt nobody, but we just can't pay for another's losing. Now, if you'll talk sense and do a little explaining, maybe we can get somewhere. Hold it, stranger. All right, boys. If it wasn't for this man, I wouldn't be here. Daddy, are you all right? 
Where have you been? Why didn't you wait for me in town? Well, you told me to go. Excuse me, Miss Jones. Charlie, did you send your daughter word to go to Jones's? No. Well, I knew it was a trick when she told me, so we rode over here to head you off. John, they killed Porter. Monty, look after the buckboard, will you? Yes, sir. This man saved my life. I'm afraid in my excitement, I forgot to thank you, sir. That's all right. I'm sorry I didn't arrive sooner. And I want to thank you, too. I couldn't afford to lose Dad. What brought you up in these parts, Smith? Uh, just drifting a bunch of cattle through here. Uh, that is, uh, me and my partner. You know these men? Very well. Meet two song Smith. Mm -hmm. Or, uh, should I say, two gun Smith. And his partner, Tony Martin. My daughter, Joan. Pleased to meet you. Thank you. Staying or drifting, Smith? That all depends. On what? The price of beef. That's right, Tucson. We understand they're paying top prices around here, and uh, there's no time like the present to make a deal. How many head have you got? Five hundred and ten uh, now. Oh, I guess we can make a deal all right. And if we do, are you staying or drifting? That all depends. I can make it interesting for you if you stay on. We've been having a lot of trouble. Well, uh, wherever this trouble, you usually find Tucson Smith. Mr. Hayden, uh, just how do you get to your ranch from here? Why, you... You go straight down the canyon trail. You can't miss it. All right, Stoney, you better get the stock moving. Right, Potter. Uh, Sheriff, uh, there's uh, three of your ex-citizens lying over there in the meadows. I thought maybe the law might be interested. Well, the law sure will be. Senor Torrell, come now. I told you never to come here in the daytime. But I had to come. They just got Foster, Peters, and Marks. What about Hayden? We got Porter, and would have gotten Hayden, but a pair of strangers cut down on us. And one of them was the best lead slinger I ever saw. Well, I was lucky to get away. Lucky for Hayden, you mean? Toro? You're riding across the border. You know where to go. Get Saunders and his men and have them back here at midnight. Yes, sir. Toro! You come back with them. Yes, sir. Boys, I'm not mentioning any names, but uh, some fellows are just naturally handsome. <laughs> <laughs> Pardon me. Dad would like you and Mr. Martin to have supper with us. Thank you. Hey, are you uh, staying or drifting? I'll explain that to you later. That's what I thought. <clears throat> Mr. Hayden and his uh, most charming daughter are to be my guests for dinner tomorrow night. After a very enjoyable evening, they will be leaving for home. Oh, say about uh, 10 o'clock. There will be no mistakes this time. Do I make myself clear? We understand you. What's the matter, Taro? You better count me out on this one, Rontel. I have been most generous in my remuneration. For, that's the pay, gentlemen, for the services that I have received. So, Taro, 
If you'll just step into the other room, I'll pay you off. Well, that'll be all right with me. Help yourself, gentlemen. Tomorrow night. Well, you certainly look charming this evening, Miss Hayden. And that dress certainly radiates your lovely personality. I don't know when I've ever seen you looking quite so beautiful. Thank you, Mr. Rontel. Haven't you forgotten something, Daddy? I'm sorry. Mr. Rontel, I took the liberty of inviting these two gentlemen to supper inasmuch as they're interested in our situation. There's something we wish to discuss with you later. Meet Mr. Smith. Uh, glad to know you, sir. And Mr. Martin. Hi. It's a pleasure, gentlemen. Won't you be seated? Mr. Rontel, if you'll excuse me, I'm a kind of an observant cuss, and it seems to me I've seen a thing just like that one hanging in a place across the border. In fact, uh, just like that one. Uh, Smith, what was the name of that hangout? Uh, what he means is that you have a right nice layout. Now, that is uh, pleasant to look at. Oh, I see. Thanks. It's a hobby of mine. Mr. Rontel, your house and ranch are so peaceful and quiet. It's a pleasure to spend the evening here. Thank you. That's right, Miss Hayden. This peaceful valley reminds me of when a fellow's riding along alone and he beds down for a good night's sleep. When suddenly he's attacked by a pack of wolves. But a wolf is always a gentleman. He howls to let you know he's a coming. That's very true. You know, Smith and his partner were on their way here to sell me a bunch of cattle. Fortunately for me, they arrived just in time to save my life. Well, that was splendid of you, Smith. I feel that we all owe you a vote of thanks. It would be most unfortunate if we were to lose Mr. Hayden. He means so much to the success of this valley. He must mean a lot to whoever's gunning for him. I've asked Smith and his partner to go to work for me. I figured that being total strangers here, they might learn the identity of the killers. I think that's a splendid idea. They might be able to find out something. Just how did these killings occur, Mr. Hayden? I told you about that before, but here's something that I didn't tell you. The men who were killed owned ranches parallel with mine. They've been after me for some time. This is the fourth open attempt to get me. They seem to learn in advance every move I make. Then somebody close to you is tipping them off. Who could that be? Surely not one of my own men. They're all like 
sons to me. We've discussed that, haven't we, Mr. Rontel? Yes, from all angles. I may be a little thick, pardon me, but uh, would you mind discussing it again? Oh, well, your suspicions of Mr. Hayden's men are baseless, Mr. Smith. I think it's a waste of time. Well, maybe it is, but I've got lots of it, and I'm willing to invest a little. After Mr. Bell was killed, Rontel bought his ranch. We stationed several men there, but no further raids have occurred. And uh, I thought it might be a good idea if I purchased Mrs. Porter's ranch and placed several of our men there. That's a waste of time. What about the law? They're doing all they can. Then why not resort to the other law? What law? The law of the 45. Uh, thought me and Stoney'd ride into town again today. Uh, yesterday, when I was in the four aces, I mentioned uh, sort of confidential like to a fellow that uh, the next time we rode into town, that we was coming through the new road in Pine Canyon. Now, if that reaches the right ears, we might learn something. I hope so. I'll be seeing you. You know him? I do. Runs with that Vincent gang across the board. Now we're getting someplace. Mind. Uh, something happened. We just told Mr. Hayden about it, and he said we should come over and tell you. Well, what happened? Uh, we were on our way to town through Pine Canyon, and three hombres tried to dry gulch us. And? Uh, we, we left them there. You see, uh, we recognized one of them. He's a member of the Vincent gang that runs across the border. We thought we'd ride over and see what we could find out. Don't you think that's a good plan? Why, yes. Splendid. But I'd be very careful. 
Oh, we'll be careful, all right. I'll wait here for you and see what you find out. Much obliged. Thanks. It works. What we found out tonight is our business. Remember that, Stoney. Say, you got enough evidence on that bird to throw down on him now. Yeah, but what is a good cowpuncher doing around now? He gathers in all the mavericks, don't he? favorite song.
You wait here. I'll see the boss. I brought Joe Sanchez, and if there's a man alive who can match guns with him, I never heard of him. Good. I'll talk to him. All right. Joe, this is Mr. Rontel, the man I told you about. Como está, señor? How are you? Are the uh, arrangements satisfactory, Sanchez? The deal is all right, but... But what? Who are these men I come for? Huh. You don't have to worry about that. I'll make all arrangements and point them out to you. Mm. It looks funny. <laughs> You're not worried or afraid, are you, Sanchez? Joe Sanchez worried? Afraid? <laughs> That's very funny. Que listo. I think, senor, it cost you double to do the job now. Well, if that's it, that's it. Gracias, senor, gracias. Que bueno. We'd better be going. Tucson. There's nobody here looking for trouble. Oh, that was just Tony's idea of an unusual entrance. <laughs> and I'm buying the drink. That's unusual. <laughs> Sanchez headed for the border. Go after him. And if he reaches the border, I'll be looking for you. Hola, amigos míos. Bueno, 
That was an unusual meeting in town, Joe, especially after our last meeting in Juarez. I thought then that we understood that you were to ride the straight and narrow. I am sorry, amigo. I do not know it is you, or I not take the job. I never forget you saved my life last time. Then the promise you made to me in Juarez didn't mean anything. It, it does this time. I know the code of the gang you're running with, Joe. And do you expect me to believe in you again? Lo juro por la Virgen. I swear. All right. Who paid you to come after me? All right, amigo Smith. I tell you. It was... Joe! Joe! Dios mío. Perdóname. Joe. Tucson, you've got enough evidence right now for me to make an arrest. There's two things we gotta find out before we make a move. And if you'll ride with us, I think we'll come out on top. Boy, I'll ride with you to the end of the trail. What's your scheme? Give me a letter to the banker so he'll talk freely. All right, I'll do that. <clears throat> Smith just went into the bank. All right. Watch him. Well, uh, just what is it you would like to know, Mr. Smith? What's the amount of Gordon Rontel's account? His personal account is rather small. But acting with power of attorney, he has access to very large amounts. Whose power of attorney? Why, Sir Henry Sheffield's, representing British Continental. Were these funds used to purchase the Forbes Ranch? Well, now that I am not aware of. But uh, let me explain the arrangement to you. The amounts, when and as they were remitted from England, were immediately withdrawn by Mr. Rondell uh, through Sheffield's power of attorney. You know where I can locate Mr. Sheffield? Well, to my knowledge, he has returned to England. Thank you, sir. Good day. Good day, sir. Uh, I'd like to ask you a few questions, if you don't mind. Why, sure, that's all right. Uh, do you remember some time back selling a ticket to an Englishman who was returning to England? Why, sure I do. But there wasn't one of them. There was two of them. And those fellas, the way they was talking, and the way they was fitted out... <laughs> well, I'm not interested in that. Uh, what I want to know is, when did they leave? Well, they didn't. That is, not the both of them. One of them left, and the other one stayed here. Well, are you sure that the other one didn't leave town later? As sure as my wife's name is Mary, they couldn't get out of here without buying a ticket for me. Thanks. Smith was at the railroad station questioning the agent. He found out Sheffield never left here. Meet me at my house. Mosey around, Stoney, and keep your eye on Rontel. Mr. Hayden, we're planning a showdown. Gather up all the ranchers you can and seal up this valley. And let no one in or out, especially Ron Pell. Monty! Go get the boys! The 
They shot him in the back. Where is he? I took him to the doctor. I just stepped up on the sidewalk. This side is the hotel. They got me in the back. That's all I know. Easy, Stoney. We're still partners, ain't we? We're still partners. He's bad hit, and it depends on his constitution and the way he'll fight to live. If that's all it takes, he'll pull through. Sherry, if it's just the same with you, I'd like to go alone. All right, boy. Come on, Bill. This man's getting too smart. I've got a new plan, and I want you to listen and follow it carefully. Now, this is what we're going to do. The Smith is coming. Cover every point in the house. Unlock the door, and he'll come inside. It'll be much easier then. Turn around, don't have that gun. You've got another one in your pocket that you made a mistake with. Drop it. I give you 15 seconds to tell me where Sheffield is. All right. You'll win.
They've got Stoney. Rontel is the man. Rontel? Yes. Smith is going to take him alone. Mr. Sheffield, if you'll tell me why you were put here, I can clear up things mighty quick. I'm a geologist representing a British concern, sent here to make an investment. I employed this man, Ron Tell, to represent us in the transaction. When he learned what we wanted, he violated his trust, and this is the result. He forced me to turn over my concern's money to use in his deviltry. Then you wanted the ranch of Hayden and the properties adjoining. That's right. Why? I discovered oil. You were pretty ambitious. You wanted that oil for yourself. You terrorized the community, stopping at nothing. <laughs> As a good Samaritan bought up the ranches of your victims. When your plan was completed, as far as Sheffield was concerned, dead men tell no tales. Brontel, there are two laws. One, you don't respect. The other, the law of the 45s. I know what's worrying you. You're wondering just who Smith is and what he is on account of Jones. Well, five years ago, the outlaws framed and killed his father, and he died in the boy's arms. From that night on, he's been a terror to every outlaw that crossed his path. I guess you and me need a little fixing up. I guess we'll be drifting pretty soon. Yeah. You know, Tucson, all my life I've wanted to play Santa Claus. Santa Claus? Yeah. By the way, how is Miss Hayden? Ha <laughs> <laughs> I knew that I'd get you.
Bartender, no more liquor for these two. They've had more than enough already. More than enough? Holster your guns and drop your gun belts. You're under arrest. Under arrest? Why? Where'd you get that stagecoach? <laughs> yeah, outside of town. Hey, we got awfully tired of sitting in the saddle. Yeah, the driver and passengers were nice enough to want to walk. <laughs> it was just dumb luck you didn't kill anybody the way you came into town. Let's go. Oh, now, come on, Marshal. We're from the King herd. I'm Rolf King. That's my brother, Sam. Arch, when he comes into town of the herd, to pay for any damages we've done. That's fine. You can wait for him in jail. Marshal, maybe you didn't hear my brother right. We're the King family. Maybe you didn't hear me. I said drop those gun belts. Nobody tells me nothing! You stop it, Sam. We're in enough trouble now. You know what I said about you? Mind your temper now. Nobody takes my gun. You better listen to him, son. He's giving you good advice. Marshal, you want my gun. You come and get it! Why, you cut it out, Sam! You hit! Sam! Sam! Sam? This is my brother you just killed. Tomorrow, there'll be 3,000 head along, odds and 25 wild cowboys out there on that street, leading them as the toughest trail boss ever left Texas. His name is Arch King. He also is my brother. Stupid move, Marshal. I'm Nels Decker, Cattlemen Freight Association. These men bring a lot of money into Yuma. They do this every year at Trail's End. Not anymore, they don't. The last three lawmen we had said the same thing. They didn't last out the week. My name is Harmon. I'm here to stay. All right, let's go. Come on. Get an undertaker. Such as it is. My name's McNeil. Folks around here mostly call me Mule. 
That's because I used mules in my freighting business. Good thing I didn't use jackasses. <laughs> my name's Harmon, Dave Harmon. Oh, no, I thought you might be needing these. Last time a lawman left here, I picked him up for safekeeping. As a matter of fact, I was just looking for him. Well, it didn't take long for trouble to find you. Oh, I guess you could say it uh, goes with the job. Yeah, but you didn't back away. That's real refreshing to this town. See, we ain't had any real law here yet. Mostly the folks plan on just standing back and watching to see what happens. Figure it's no use to get all head up over what might be. <laughs> now, they got a point. That king boy there, his brother's an important man around these parts. So I hear. Yeah, well, like I was saying, I own McNeil Freight, which ain't doing too well lately. Mostly of fish, and big yellow cats pan fried better than beef. Well, holler if you need anything. As a matter of fact, uh, you can send a wagon out for those stagecoach passengers, and uh, I could use some advice on a place to stay. Oh, we got two hotels in town, best ones across the street. My stable real handy for your stock right next door. And thank you for your business. want a room overlooking the street. Ten dollars a week, Marshal, in advance. The last officer of the law didn't stay a week. And I didn't collect, either. A month in advance. Well, at least you're an optimist. I'm Julie Williams. I own the hotel. A little loan, Marshal. I prefer it that way, and I believe in laying out the situation. It avoids misunderstanding. Well, I'll try to keep that in mind. We certainly wouldn't want any misunderstandings, Miss Williams. I got the wrong room. I'll say you have. Didn't anybody ever teach you you can go to jail for stealing? Please, senor. Do not tell the Lord. Son, I am the law. Mm. I'll shoot. Pulling a gun on a marshal. You get another five years for that. If you will let me go, I will not shoot. I don't make bargains with criminals. Especially when they got no bullets in the gun. Where'd you get this? What's your name? You got a family kid? I took care of myself. Yeah, so I noticed. Where'd you come from? Nogales. How'd you get here? On my horse. Most of the way. He died many miles away from you. He was old. Where'd you get a horse? Mm hmm? One thing you better learn, kid. When you need something, try asking for it. Now, what are we gonna do with you, kid? You don't know anybody, you got no place to stay, and you got no money. Thank <laughs> you. 
Hey, kid! Hey! I catch you stealing again, I'll whip you to a frazzle. What's your name? Andres. The marshal's office needs cleaning. You can sleep there at night. Do a bad job, I'll pay you a dollar a week. You work hard, I'll pay you three. Who decides if I do good? Can't eat on a dollar a week. Three dollars you can. Take that gun. Kid. A little advance on your salary. Get yourself some clothes and something to eat. Somebody sees me going into his office. So that's what I brought you along for. You're just a good army officer. Drop by to pay his respects to the marshal. Hey, now listen, relax. We'll have King out of there in two minutes and our problems are over. Just a couple of friends who believe in justice. Come on, we got a horse outside. Hurry him up. Where's the horse? Across the street. Whoever you are, me and my brother won't forget you. Yeah, I'm sure you won't. Now get going. Brothers, he did. Arch King will rip that marshal apart. But we were only gonna let him escape. Yeah, but now you're in all the way. Andres? Kid? Yes, senor. You're all right. See. Si. What happened? Two men came in and let the cover out of the cell. Told them that there was a horse waiting for him outside. Then they shot him with your shotgun. What they looked like? It was dark. I cannot see. What did you see? No faces. But one of the men was wearing high, shiny boots. I could see them. Very shiny. High, shiny boots? Sounds like army. Army uniform. Uh, 
You always kill escaping prisoners, Marshal? I didn't kill him. And who did? I don't know that yet. He was killed with buckshot. You're carrying a shotgun. I saw it. It was not Senor Harmon. You saw it? I was sleeping there. What did you see, kid? I just know it wasn't Senor Harmon. Well, who was it? What did you see? It was too dark. I see. You sure it wasn't Harmon? Then you say it was too dark to see who it really was. That's not good enough, kid. Harmon, when Arch King rides into Yuma tomorrow, he's going to want more than the Mexican kid's word that you didn't kill his brother. Senor Harmon? From my grandfather. From your grandfather? See. Si. From your grandfather what? The horse. Oh. The gun too? See. Si. Lock the door. Marshal Harmon from Yuma to see the commanding officer. Sign the log. Commanding officer's quarters is across the parade ground there where the light is. Everybody sign in and out? After colors by sundown. Major Lucas has orders. He's the commanding officer here. I see a Captain Sims White signed out at 7 o'clock. Yes, sir. Officers only tonight. Enlisted men are restricted. He the only one to leave? Yes, sir. He's a quartermaster. Thank you. Major retired several hours ago, sir. I'm his orderly. Can we put you up until morning? I can't wait. I'm sorry, sir. My orders is not to wake him. Well, I wouldn't want you to disobey your orders. I imagine the Major would be along shortly. Marshal Harmon couldn't wait until morning to see you, sir. I must admit, he is invictive. I'll assume you'll have a good explanation. Two men broke a prisoner out of my jail in Yuma tonight. Whoever did it shot him in the back in the street, and one of those men was wearing an army uniform. Where's the sound recall? Or have my command kill each other in the dark? Yes, sir. Come on this way. So 
you think one of my men was in your jail tonight? I checked your log at the gate, and Captain Sims White was the only soldier left of Fort. White is our quartermaster. He has the run of the area. Now, wait just a minute. You're not accusing Captain White, are you? I'm not accusing anybody. White has a perfect record. He comes from an army family. Your father's a brigadier general. Just what are the uh, captain's duties? Principally to supply the army forts from Yuma to Santa Fe. He also regulates beef and other supplies to the Indians. Well, what exactly does that mean? That's part of the terms of our peace treaty. They stay on their reservations and we supply them with cattle and some of their other needs. I noticed those wagons out there have got Decker's name on them. They're waiting for the cattle drive to come in. And when they do, Decker will ship out the cattle and other supplies to all the reservations in the territory. Does Decker handle all your freight? According to law, we have to get two bids before we can make a deal. The bids come from Mules, McNeil, and Decker. And somehow Decker has always come up with the lowest bids. Which uh, were then submitted to Captain White. That's part of the duty of the quartermaster. Now, wait just a minute, Marshal. I'd like to know just what you're implying. That trail herd you're waiting on is headed by Arch King. It'll be here tomorrow. His two brothers came into town today, and I had to kill one of them. I want the two men that killed the other one. I know, Arch King. It'll be hard to handle. I've been expecting you, Harmon. Any lawman assigned near my post. I want to know all about them. And no secrets from the army. It's all here. Harmon, Dave, formerly a lieutenant, good war record. Moved his family west after the peace. Two years later, his wife, Sarah, was raped and murdered by raiders. They also killed your son, Jeremy. There are no arrests. The raiders were reported to be wearing Union Army uniforms. Not just reported, I saw them. He left his ranch. Next reported to be United States Marshal. Served in Fort Defiance Territory, Fort Tularosa Territory, Fort Concho Territory. Present assignment, Yuma. You know, that's the part that interested me most. Every place you've served is near an army fort. Is that a coincidence, Mr. Harmon? I hope you won't let your hatreds cloud your duty, as far as my men are concerned. Where can I find Captain White? Well, if the King Cattle Drive is that close, he probably would be at the Indian Reservation, planning delivery. That's about 10 miles farther up the river. Harmon? I'd go easy if I were you. You haven't got much evidence to arrest a man on. If he's innocent, he's got nothing to worry about. If he's guilty, he'll face a court-martial. If he's guilty, he'll face me.
Bin I too? Yes, yes. Moa Hooker. Yes, yes. Caballo. Why you come? I'm looking for a Captain White, quartermaster for the army. You seen him? One day back. What time did he leave? Captain White, not fool to stay much time here. Well, I can't say as I blame him if he got the reception I did. Plenty talk. You, go, now. now. Wait a minute, I don't understand this. White brings you his supplies, I'd think you'd be glad to see him. My people, hungry. Treaty, say, 50 cattle month. Where are cattle, star man? Well, there's a trail herd on its way here now. Many cattle come to fort. Or Yumas. Not many cattle come here. What happens to them? Ask your Captain White. I intend to. Hunger make anger. Anger make war. We come. Get cattle. I can't let you do that, but if you got cattle coming, I'll see you get them. Promises. No, not just promises. I'm here to bring the law. White man law or red man law? Whatever the treaty says. Sanders, what brings you way out here? Bad news, Mr. King. It's your brothers. They're both dead. Murdered. Do you hear me, Mr. King? We got a new marshal in Yuma, a man by the name of Harmon. He got into one brother down the saloon and back shot the other in front of the jail. Why? That I don't know. Slim, tell the boys with the herd to move them on towards town. The rest of you get mounted. <laughs> was at the fort asking a lot of questions. He won't get anywhere. Major Lucas sent for me. What did he want? I didn't see him. I made some excuse and came right here. Well, that was a stupid thing to do. The King Herd will be in tomorrow. 
We can't take any chances. I want you to deliver every head to the Indians at the reservation. All right, now you listen to me. I've already got those cattle sold out in California. That's thousands of dollars. I don't intend to let some shiny badge or a blue uniform throw it away. Last night you framed me into helping to kill a man. I'm through, Nelson. Why don't you said it yourself? You helped kill a man. I'd guess that Harmon was partial to hanging. Now, your only hope, if you want to keep away from a rope burn, is to do exactly what I tell you. Now, when this is over, and it will be soon, we go our separate ways and all of this is forgotten. Now, Captain, you just go back to the hotel and stay there. Arch King will be in town soon. He'll take care of Harmon, and none of us will have anything to worry about. Nels Decker. He's a mighty powerful man around these parts. He got a lot of dollars to back him up. Uh, that's too bad, I guess. That makes him pretty tough competition to bid against. Well, like I said, he's got all the dollars. What do you know about Arch King? I know you're going to be meeting him real soon. Marshal Harmon. From what I hear, I'm going to have to kill you. You afraid of me, King? Hardly. Let's get down off these horses and talk some. Could be you heard part of the story wrong. My office is back there. Brothers took over a stagecoach outside of town. They were liquored up, breaking the law. When I arrested them, the youngest one took three shots at me and I had to kill him. I think you'll find all the witnesses you need that'll verify what I'm telling you. What about Rawl? Well, I had him locked up back there. Now, last night, somebody broke him out. Shot him in the back out there in the street. And it wasn't me. It is your gun. No, that's true enough. Sam was wild. Whiskey don't mix with that. And I can't argue with a man for shooting when he's drawed on. But back shooting something else and somebody in this town's gonna pay. You're the marshal. Rawl is your prisoner in your jail. It's your gun that killed him. I only 
you got your words, you didn't pull the trigger on him. Now then, tomorrow comes sundown, you ain't got the man. As far as I'm concerned, you are the man. What's this all about? Call me a Mexican. You did. True, ain't it? Well? See? Can't change that. No. And quit complaining, kid, and be proud of what you are. Fighting for is different than fighting against. Well, you better get back to the jail and get it cleaned up. You handled that very nicely. I wish they were all that easy. <laughs> Not in Yuma. Oh, well, maybe. I've got to ride out to the fort and see if I can find a Captain White. Oh, well, that's a long way to go for nothing. White checked into my place a couple of hours ago. Room 16. Thank you. When I left King and his men, they were mad and wood hornets. What happened? That Harmon fellow is smart, real smart. Somehow he took the initiative away from King and the whole thing ended up in talk, nothing else. So what do we do now? Nothing. We stay quiet, very quiet, and very close to Captain White. You own that man after last night. He's coming a part of the seams. You get over to the hotel. Don't let him get out of your sight and don't let him open his mouth. I certainly appreciate your help. Uh, thanks, and would you close the door on your way out? She's in there. I warned you about taking out your hatred and revenge on my men. I'm going to wire Washington immediately to ask permission to put this town under martial law. I'd be sure of my facts if I were you. The facts are, Captain White has nothing but ketchup on his chest. And he's been dead for hours. What kind of trickery is this? I found White dead beside a tin of cyanide crystals. Are you telling me that this is a suicide? I fired those shots to make people think otherwise. Washington said clean up Yuma. Right now there's cowboys and a trail boss ready to tear this town apart. 
And out there, the Zendans being shortchanged on beef issue, and they're hungry. If they explode, this territory could go up in smoke. And I think that White and Decker are the men responsible. Now, Decker doesn't know the White is dead yet, and he's got to be afraid he'll talk. And sometime tonight, I expect somebody to pay White a visit. And when they do, I intend to be here. Right now, I'm hungry. I haven't slept in two nights, and it's hot, and I'm flat out of patience. All right, Marshal. You can trust the doc here. We'll keep quiet about White until tomorrow. But only until tomorrow. How's the food? Good, good pie, too. Mm -hmm. By the way, you owe me for a bottle of ketchup. And uh, you owe me a promise not to talk about it. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me ask you a question. I understand that Decker's got most of the money here. You bring it? When Decker first came to town, he brought everything he owned in one wagon. Now he owns 50 of them. Not much freight in the territory moves without him. You must make it kind of rough on McNeil. He gets a short haul job once in a while. Not much more than that. I guess Decker's got quite a few hands working for him. Mm -hmm. Thank you. 30 or 40 men on and off. And his head man, Derek Saunders. Yeah, I've seen him. What do you know about him? I think he could be dangerous. Are you at least getting close to something? Maybe. Oh, I hope so. I'm afraid Arch King won't wait. Two brothers dead, you can't blame him. Do you think I killed Raul King? Do you think I'd be helping you if I did? We've had so many lawmen in Yuma. There's one thing different about you. I think you care. Sometimes it takes more than that. Julie. How many banks are there in the territory? Only three outside of ours. One in Tucson, one in Bisbee, and one in Tombstone. Thanks. Dave, be careful. Well, I don't know what you're worried about. What? I got my rent paid in advance. sleep over at the hotel tonight. You tell the lady I said you could have my room. But why? I don't think I'm going to be needing it. Now you get going. Better work. With a dedicated man like him, you know it will.
I told you I'd beat you tonight. Checkers was always my strong point back home. That would a crow back fire. You remember last Tuesday? Hey, Mules, look, the store. Harvey, you go sound the alarm quick. Fire! Fire! Fire at Harvey's store! That's a fire bell! Where is it? Fire! Fire! Drop that gun. Easy, Marshal. Now, easy. Slow down. I can see where you're a little upset with finding me here like this. I mean, I did start out with the best of intentions, and all I've done is kind of foul things up. You know, uh, this is going to sound rather foolish, but... Uh... <laughs> I told you to drop that gun, and now I'm telling you to drop the smart talk. All right, all right. So I admit I broke into jail. So what does that prove? Listen, Harmon, I got my... You stand there telling me I got no proof, and you're stinking of coal oil? You set that fire to try to get me away from the jail long enough to kill White. You can't prove that. My story is I just dropped by to comfort an old friend. The other ear is a little trickier. The gun tends to pull to the left. All right, all right. But all I was going to do is bust him out. Like you busted Raul King out of jail? You're going to write it out just like it happened, and then you're going to sign it. I told you. I was just going to bust him out of jail. All right. We'll do it the hard way. Outside. Where are you taking me? We're going to have a little talk with Mr. Arch King. Fire, senor! I'm going to go! I want five minutes. All right, five minutes. Don't you hurt that kid, and I promise you, this world ain't big enough for you to find a place to hide in. Five minutes. You had to fire under control, Marshal. What's wrong? Sanders took the boy. Sanders. You see him? No. You get word to Major Lucas. Tell him to take over while I'm gone. Uh, what do we do with Captain White? 
bury him. Sorry they got away. It was my fault. Don't you worry about that kid as long as you're not hurt. I'm all right. Any idea where they went? No, but Senor Decker said it was time to leave. He tied me up while the other man got the horses. All right, you get back to the hotel and you wait for me there.
Now turn around slow. I'd kill you right now, but I want to see you die. Now throw that out, rifle. I got your gun. With the left hand. Two fingers. Slow. I throw it down. The biggest mistake of your life, Harmon, was coming to Yuma. You had to stick your nose to my business. Your business? Those Indians will go to war before they starve, and a lot of people are going to get killed. There's nothing you can do about it. With you dead, Captain White won't talk. He'll go out to the reservation, as usual, tell the Indians the beef is coming, and deliver most of it to me to ship out. I collect from the army, take it west, and sell it all over again. You don't think I'd let a nosy marshal spoil that good a business, do you? You're stupid, Harmon. Dying for a filthy pack of Indians. <laughs> Fort Yuma, get cattle, food. Go back to the reservation. I'll see you get your beef and supplies. Why, we trust you. Where's the wisdom in saving a man's life if you can't trust him? We wait. the man? Yeah. Well, he came very well tonight, can he? I guess you're going to want more proof. Sanders and White killed your brother. They were both working for Decker. Why would Decker want my brother dead? I'm coming to that. Decker came out here with one wagon, stone broke, and in just a short time, he had government contracts and 50 wagons. Now, somebody had to back him up with money, help him get those contracts. Somebody who was familiar with the facts, figures, and procedures followed in delivering cattle and supplies to the Indians. Marshal! Just what are you insinuating? I'm not insinuating, I'm telling you. Somebody here, somebody in this town, was Decker's boss. What's all that got to do with my brother? That somebody also knows who killed him and why. 
Well, who is it? Major Lucas here told me that two bids have to be made on every government contract. That's right. McNeil, you were afraid another freight outfit would come into town and put you out of business. So you brought Decker in, set him up, and let him underbid you. You got the bids and the blame, and you got a nice cut of the profits. Including what Decker's been stealing from the Indians, which is considerable. And that's where White came in. He covered up for Decker. Harmon, that story's a caca and it ain't worth answering. Well, you won't have to. I figured you were too smart to keep the money here in town, so I sent a telegram to every bank in the territory. While you were doing a lot of fishing and no business, you put over $40,000 in the bank at Bisbee. You want more proof? I didn't kill Royal King. That was Decker's idea. You mean you didn't pull the trigger? But you let him kill Rawl because, like Decker, you felt sure that Arch King would kill me, and that would keep things wide open for you. You've done your job, Marshal. Step out of the way. I can't let you do that. My brother's killing lays heavy on me. Get out of the way. You kill him, I'll have to arrest you for murder. Get out of my way, Harmon. My prisoner, King, one of us will have to die for him. And it better not be the Marshal. Because then it becomes army business. Go home. I'll see McNeil gets what's coming to him, I promise you that. Well, your words poor payment for my brother. So's another killing. I'm sorry about your brothers. Me too. Whatever you catch, I'll cook. But you have to clean it. There's no catfish in here. Oh, yes, there are. You're just not doing it right now. You have to let your line down. You see, get it down in the mud. That's where the big ones are, right down there. Do you fish a lot? When I was your age, that's practically all I did. Morning. Morning. Andres here is catching your breakfast for you. Well, you can't get it much fresher than that. You know what he says? He doesn't know how to swim. Is that right, kid? Never know what it's to swim at where I was. Well, there's plenty here. Would you teach me? Maybe. When, senor? What's your hurry? I better be good at it. You might at that. Teach me? Well, we'll get around to it. Now, senor. You are a persistent little cuss. Hey! 
Oh! Oh! <laughs> Reach out! Reach out and pull one or two of you! Pull it to you! Up your hands! That up, boy, now kick those legs! Kick them! Up your hands! Up your hands! Get those legs moving! That up, boy, keep moving! Relax, don't get so excited! That's good! 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 I did it! I can oh, swim! I can swim! You're fine. I can swim! You see? You see? I can do it! I can swim! You swim almost as well as I do. I never learned how either. <laughs> you don't know how to swim? Oh. Oh, you wouldn't do that to me. Would you?